Cromwell's Soldier. John Bunyan lived through some of England's most turbulent years, including the English Civil War led by Oliver Cromwell and the execution of King Charles I. His life and faith were shaped by these dramatic events, including a brief time serving as a common soldier in Cromwell's army. The John Bunyan Museum holds a large lock and key which are thought to have belonged to Cromwell at this time. The English Civil War swept through the whole country. Every family was affected. Every community was caught up in the fighting. It was not only a religious conflict, it was also a battle against inequalities of land ownership and established power that went all the way back to the Norman conquest. Serving in the army, Bunyan would have heard extremely radical talk about purifying the Christian faith and also about the redistribution of wealth and power. He was fighting for Parliament against the Crown. But Bunyan didn't join the army because of his Christian faith or political convictions. It isn't quite clear, but it is likely that he was a conscript swept up in the tide of battle as it engulfed the nation. He was part of a company sent to the garrison town of Newport Pagnell in Buckinghamshire and served there from the end of 1644 to 1646. The town's pride in its history is shown by this sign on the modern road inn. Newport was originally a royalist stronghold, but soon taken by the parliamentary troops. On the front line between the two armies, it was ideally situated as a garrison town, lying as it did on the Icknield Way from the south on this map, a major route from London to the Midlands and North from before Roman times, now the A6. And the town was protected by the confluence of two rivers, the Great Ouse and Lovett, flowing out to the east, which create a natural moat on two sides. Cromwell's troops threw up a great earthwork to complete the defensive ring. Traces of the enclosure and gun emplacements that completed the defences can still be seen on the town common, Berry Field. Conditions in the army at that time were dreadful and Bunyan would have endured poor rations and a long wait for his uniform. When it arrived, he would have had to pay for it himself and quite possibly share at least the trousers with another soldier, not at the same time you understand, but each wearing them when on duty. The uniform consisted of a plain brown or red doublet, a coat or cassock, two shirts, stockings of good Welsh cotton and low shoes tied with laces. He also wore a Monmouth cap and would have carried a short musket, a flintlock gun of the time. The heavy bullets for the musket were carried in a leather strap or bandolier, which was worn over the shoulder. This was fitted with pouches for bullets and 12 charges of powder. It was heavy and difficult to manage, and on top of that, the charges were liable to ignite on their own and explode. There was generally a very low view of conscripts. Colonel Venn, one of the men who signed Charles I's death warrant, wrote, Most counties press a scum of all the inhabitants, men taken out of prison, tinkers, peddlers, and vagrants that have no dwelling. Bunyan was devastatingly honest about his own condition at this time, writing in his autobiographical book, Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners, in 1666. In these days, the thoughts of religion were very grievous to me. I could neither endure it myself, nor that any other should. I was the very ringleader of all the youth that kept me company, in all manner of vice and ungodliness. Yea, such prevail and see had the lusts and fruits of the flesh in this poor soul of mine. Many of the conscripts simply deserted and went home. But John Bunyan's mother and young sister had just died and his father had remarried. It seems that he may have falsified his age in order to enter the army under the required age of 16. In any case, he stuck with it. He even volunteered for further service in Ireland, but that regiment was disbanded 
and he was demobbed. Who knows, if he had fulfilled his ambition, we might never have had the vast treasury of books and poems. We do know that he drew on his army experience in his writing. In Grace Abounding, he records an incident which he regards as an example of God's grace for him, at least. When I was a soldier, I, with others, were drawn out to go to such a place to besiege it. But when I was just ready to go, one of the company desired to go in my room, to which, when I had consented, he took my place, and coming to the siege, as he stood sentinel, he was shot in the head with a musket ball and died. The greatest effect of what he heard and saw seems to have been shown in Bunyan's later dramatic conversion to the radical independent Christianity of the parliamentary cause, depicted in his 1682 publication, The Holy War. This is all about a siege and battle over the town of Mansoul between Shaddai, God, and Diabolus, the devil. He would have been given a copy of the soldier's Bible and joined in religious worship. The army would have given him access to education and discipline and may well have started him on the path to turning his life round. The Civil War was a brutal and tragic episode in our history, but it helped to shape the England and the Britain of today. Part of that shaping lies in writings like the amazingly popular book, The Pilgrim's Progress, born out of Bunyan's conversion from the scum of the earth to one of the most influential Christian writers of all time. <laughs>